What's going on, folks? I am Goat. Welcome back to Warframe. We're doing the casual steel path builds. And here we are into another frame that it really kind of like, I understand that she can be a little boring at times, but she is also one of those frames that just doesn't really enjoy dying. Like nothing enjoys dying, but she makes a point of just not doing it. And she also makes a point of just causing absolute insanity wherever the fuck she is. And we're at the mind control frame of Nyx to start our list. So Nyx is the true mind control frame. Now, as you can see, I have taken away her little, you know, one mind control thing to have your little buddy running around and protecting you, which is fine. You can keep that. You don't even need nourish. I personally like nourish just for the, you know, the little buff and damage increase and stuff like that. But, you know, because I mean, because you're going to be specifically walking around your fourth if you're in a kind of a hairy spot. So trying to, you know, do energy regen while having a channeled ability doesn't work. So 50% effectiveness on energy orbs, 50% effectiveness on energy orbs. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of energy max and then parkour velocity and parkour velocity. Same reason as we did it with Mesa, because we want her to be able to move around. So her function, like I said, you can keep her little mind control ability if you want to. Nourish is not 100% necessary. Um, like, I mean, hell, roar is probably more functional than nourish, truth be told. So her passive and... It, by the sounds of it, it sounds like we're going to be getting a rework on her and Trinity anyway, so that's probably coming. So I'm very interesting, interested to see what they do with that. But enemies are 20% less accurate when targeting Nyx. I mean, Grenier are like stormtroopers. Well, no. Yeah, yeah probably Grenier are like stormtroopers, and then Corpus are like the sober stormtroopers. So it's just like, you know, I mean, taking 20% of their accuracy off, whatever. Uh, her first ability is usually mind control. You can basically enthrall one dude's mind and basically have him be your little specter buddy for a short dur for a duration. Psychic Bolts is just a basic... I mean, basically, you decrease the speed of energy of enemies, and for a very, very low cost of uh, ability strength... You can armor strip enemies with these little psychic bolts. It's a good time. Uh, chaos. Basically, you cast this into a fucking group, and anybody in that group just starts shooting each other. They basically give up on life and say, hey, my best friend is now my frenemy. So that's just kind of the thing. I mean, as it says, it causes mass hysteria on the battlefield by confusing all enemies to attack random factions. So they may attack you. They may attack the, They may attack each other. It's kind of hit or miss. And then the last one is absorb. So basically you have this giant energy ball that normally she would sit there and be doing this weird Buddhist hovering thing while they shoot at you. And then when you blow it up, you send them flinging and flying away. Now, if you run her assimilate augment, you can actually move around. Hence the parkour shards. Like Mesa, you move around at 50% speed, but with, with the, you know, the parkour shards on there, unless it involves, you know, going upstairs or ledges or things like that, to where you have to come out of her, uh, absorb bubble um you can basically just kind of dodge roll around and it is a constant draw just like mesa's peacemakers or regulators yeah yeah her peacemakers so but basically she just absorbs all incoming damage and channels that into collected energy and then explodes in a radial discharge Nix's weapon damage is buffed based on incoming on the incoming absorb damage while the ability uh, when the ability ends so it's kind of an interesting conversion and the percentage is really fucking low. But it's really fun to just walk around, cause chaos, armor strip, and watch everybody kill themselves. That's really where Nyx's bread and butter is. Now, the build behind this is very, very simple. You need 130% ability strength. As long as you have that, you are good to go. Uh, the Arcane Blessing is whatever the hell you want to put on there. Honestly, Endurance Drift is on here for the Parkour Velocity. The Energy Max is nice, but the Parkour Velocity is really why that's on here assimilate us so we can move and then we want ability efficiency without tanking the bejesus out of the ability duration so we do a 10 point instead of an 11 point you know and then just a little bit of range pretty pretty self-explanatory yes it's for forma is endurance drift necessary absolutely not and as you can see by the four forma it's not even necessary for that like i mean fleeting expertise can go there really doesn't fucking matter and you still have 11 points left over so it's really more like three forma it's just saying this is this is you know three forma 
I mean, technically, really, two, because endurance drift isn't even really necessary either. So it's like you can have an open stretch, open energy side or energy nexus, and assimilate and all that. Yeah, so probably three form of build, two to three, max. Uh, Arcane energize is definitely helpful. Plus the energy orbs, um, the energy orbs basically being doubled whenever you pick them up. Uh, shards, that's pretty damn helpful. Overall, this is just a really fun time. Turn into a bubble, cause chaos, armor strip, and watch them kill themselves. That's just what happens. Our next frame, Oberon. Now, personally, Oberon is one of those frames I think he needs a polish up. The primary reason behind it is because everything is base static damage numbers. Okay, and again, you'll see me use Condemn, because I don't use Smite. Smite's kind of a thing. It really is. So, Oberon. Allied companions receive 25% health link, armor link, and shield link from Oberon. In addition to your companion receives an instant revive, uh, an instant revive per mission. With, again, this is one of the things where it's like, okay, cool. So, like, he, he gives a 25% buff to everybody in the group, and a companion get one gets one instant revive, but they fucking, they don't perma-die anymore. So it's like, there's some work that they could do to the passive. Smite is okay, but it's not great. So I put Condemn there for a little bit of extra survivability. Um, Hollowed Ground. This is a weird one because you used to be able to cast this fucking thing all over the place. Now you get to cast it in one goddamn spot at a 220 degree or 220.5 degree angle, which is a pretty good size angle. So you paint yourself into a corner with this shit. And it basically deals an exceptionally low amount of radiation damage with a pretty crappy status chance. And you do get an added duration by running Hollowed Eruption, which is cool. But overall, this needs a buff. This needs a big buff, because Hollowed Ground is just kind of not what it was anymore. Renewal. Okay. So you get health per second. You get an initial heal. You slow down, bleed out. You get an armor buff, so damage reduction. And you have a buff duration that goes with this. Got a pretty good radius, so this also affects allies. It's a good time. And then Reckoning. Basically, you lift enemies up, you slap the fuck at them, you armor strip them. And, you know, yeah, you got a 50% health orb drop, so something like Arcane Blessing could definitely come in, come in handy here because, you know, Arcane, you know, health orbs being on the ground. But basically, you just cause radiation and impact damage upon enemies that are either radiated or have just been hit by this motherfucker. So what we have here is shield capacity, shield capacity, and shield capacity due to condemn being on here. The shards are the sky's the limit. So there is some some shit that you can do to make him really fucking good. One of them being one of his augments. Okay, Phoenix Renewal. So taking fatal damage while under the effect of renewal will instead heal you and your allies 50% uh, to 50% health. This effect triggers once uh for each ally for every 90 seconds so basically you can get your ass killed as long as you have renewal running and you will basically just insta revive with half your health it is a thing like overrunning hollow eruption it is definitely a thing but overall this is a survivable build that costs absolutely no forma you can get Basically, 2,269 health with once Arcane Blessing stacks up and you have a 50% chance of getting health orbs every time you fucking, you know, from every enemy that's affected by Reckoning. So you have a very quick chance of buffing the shit out of your health, plus giving yourself some Force Proc Overguard or Overshields with Condemn. And you lock the enemies down for basically playing more weapon platform style with him. You don't need a ton of range or a ton of ability duration um so i mean overall like oberon needs some work he needs he needs some love man he really does but is he playable absolutely he's playable is he great nah, that's for each individual player to decide at the end of the day like he's he's i like he he's kind of in the i category he's like low you know low c to d tier you know unless you're just really really functionally you know running like phoenix renewal and at that point i can see where some players are really like ah this is great so that's Oberon on to one of the most broken frames in this fucking game without question one of the most busted ass frames in this game to put it mildly 
Baruch, Octavia, and Saren are probably, in my opinion, the three most powerful frames in this game right now. And that's not taking away from any other frame. It's just these frames in particular do some really, really broken shit. So, just look over the shards. We have ability strength, ability duration, ability duration, ability, you know, and, you know, so three ability duration, casting speed, and ability strength. And what she does, and yes, you'll see, I have Nourish on here for energy regen, because none of this shit is channeled. So you can actually, if you do kind of, like, misplace, you know, some shit, you need to cast it in different spots. You know, like you drop the mallet in the wrong place or something like that. Because, personally, I think her little CC rolly ball thing... It's all right. But it also kind of defeats the purpose of what the mallet's doing. And believe me when I tell you, even without her second ability on there, I promise you this will go to level cap. It is probably the most boring way to get there, but it will do it. So replenish 30 energy over 30 seconds for Octavia and allies within 15 meters when abilities are activated. Well, that's going to be pretty easy the way this build's done. So the mallet, you basically throw this thing out and it does 5.43 times blast damage, which with the blast rework is pretty goddamn good. Because basically this is like throwing a noisemaker out there and when the enemies hit it, it they're damaging their, themselves. It's a good time. And as you can see by my build, the fucking duration is no punk. Nourish is on here for energy region, and truthfully, uh, like, damage output is a funny fucking joke to even say that, and you'll see why. It's really here for energy region, and just for the purposes of if you goof. Really more, it's on there, and this sounds so stupid, but it's on there for either if you goof, or if you, um... At the beginning of a mission, basically hit Nurse, Generic, charge your energy. So, Metronome. This is her spam crouch ability. When you spam crouch, you get all sorts of goody, goody, goody things going on here, okay? You get a base duration that's the same as the mallet. You get an armor increase. You get a buff duration, which is basically how long you're invisible, so on and so forth. Uh, and then Vivis gives you a speed increase. Opera gives you multi-shot. Forte gives you melee damage, which I mean to tell you, if you're running something like the Serata or the Glaive Prime, uh, you will one-tap an Acolyte. I'm not even kidding. Overall, you basically chuck this motherfucker, and inside of a minute, you will go back, well, inside of, inside of 45 seconds, you will go back and you will spam crouch, and you will reactivate everything. And get some goods out of it. And an amp. This is a kind of a double down on using Mallet. So you're basically increasing the range and you're increasing a, a, a dramatic amount of damage multiplier to what the mallet is already doing. So when an enemy attacks the mallet, then all of a sudden the damage that's being applied to the mallet is then being multiplied on top of that because amps turned on. It, this is just so stupid. Like she is just absolutely dumb. Just, just for... You know, shits and giggles here, okay? So we're going to cast... Okay, there we go. Cool. Let's just cast this bullshit, because they can't... They ain't going to be able to see me. Fuck their paws. God damn it. Hold on. Oh, for God's sakes, I did that. Let's unpause the AI for this. S20, level 225 heavy gunners. It just literally nuked themselves by shooting a, a sound, a, a noisemaker. Like, you heard them, they went, uh, in an open fire, and we stood here for about four seconds until they killed themselves. Welcome to it. This is Octavia. She's absolutely fucking broken. Okay? Like, I mean, is she boring? Yes. But is she unbelievably powerful? Yep. 100%. Absolutely. No question.
So our next victim in this group is going to be Protea or Protea or whatever the hell you want to call her. Our Corpus Parvos Granum Frame. So shards are as follows. Ability duration. Ability duration. Corrosive stacks, corrosive stacks, and a little bit of equilibrium love. And then we have subsumed pull onto her. The reason being is because her temporal anchor is kind of poop. Okay, let's just be honest. Her fourth ability, temporal anchor, is just kind of poop. The rest of her is a lot of fucking fun. Okay. So, Proteus passive. Every fourth power cast is granted 100% ability strength. So if you're lucky enough and you're paying attention and you cast that bullshit when you throw blaze artillery out there, oh, it is a good goddamn time because that thing just starts blasting the shit out of stuff. Grenade fan. And if you invert her tap hold, this it does become a little interesting. I have it inverted to where when I tap, I get shield satellites, and when I hold, I get the shrapnel vortex. It's really to taste on that one for you. But shrapnel vortex is basically you throw these little hacky sack balls that bounce up in the air and start causing a bunch of slash damage i do say a bunch loosely but it is constantly hitting them the shield satellites basically rotate around you for a certain duration of time and give you shields 97 shields per second very very good for survivability blaze artillery kind of stupid it says fire arcing of 130 degrees but it doesn't necessarily tell you hey by the way um, I'm not going to necessarily shoot the people that you want me to. Hence why Paul's on here. I'll show this one off. Um, but basically it's just pure heat damage and it gets a hundred percent damage per hit. So for every enemy struck, it gets a hundred percent more damage for the next shot. Dispensary is just pure utility. This is universal ammo, you know, health orbs and energy orbs. It's just what this does. So this is just feeding you the goody goods. And then pull is basically yanking people to you and giving you an opportunity, as long as they're not overguarded and, you know, have the ability of not being CC'd, uh, basically pulls people in front of you. And then if you just jump backwards and throw blaze artillery, it just absolutely fucks your day up. It's a good time. So the build behind Protea is quite simple. It really, as far as I remember, it has not changed. It is five. I repeat, five form up. Um... Yes, I do have a uh, umbral mod on her, or an, a uh, umbral form on her. Yes, it is 100% worth doing so. The five forma is 100% worth using. Um, the thing is, is that you want good duration, you want good range, you want good strength, but you also don't want to completely sacrifice health out of this. And honestly, using arcane rage is not so bad, especially when you're, you're already using a uh, primary deadhead build with um your tenant galaxian just to give a little bit more you know i mean a little bit more stink to it right like we don't even need the murmur bit i was just doing that because of that uh prisma angstrom is just whatever i mean like the weapons are literally whatever the galaxian's good just because of energy region i've actually been using it quite a lot lately but it's not even necessary because she has a dispensary so just saying i mean like protea is just really good especially using pull on her so we're going to pause this ai because i just want to show you more specifically so we're come over here All right so we're just gonna yoink them and jump backwards really i didn't pull two bitches I threw three artillery cans and some shrapnel grenades at him, and they just died. That's Protea, dude. Protea is fucking good. So many people sleep on Protea, but goddamn, man. Protea is really fucking good. And then we have to finish off this round of frames, Corvex. Now, Corvex is an interesting son of a bitch, because he's the radiation popcorn maker. Okay? He's his, his shrink repillers or whatever... I don't like them. If you like them, more power to you. They're shrink or whatever the hell, those stupid radiation pillars. Um, I, I, I don't dig them at all. So, nourish because he is super energy hungry and you can get really spam happy with this motherfucker real quick. So, his contamination wall, or his contaminant wall, sorry, with his wrecking wall augment is an armor strip plus grouping ability. It's a good time. Basically, prime enemies with radiation, which does play into his third ability. Uh, you hit them with impact damage, plus you armor strip them, and you apply damage vulnerability to them. It's a good time overall. Dysymmetric guard is basically status immunity. It's a good time. 
Chance, uh, chance per status, 10%. Well, when you get a shit ton of these motherfuckers, it's a good time. And then his fourth ability, Crucible Blast. This is a little quirky to get used to, but once you start blowing people up, this is a chain reaction, just blast of death. Because once one person explodes, all the excess damage basically blasts to the next guy, and the next guy, and the next guy after that, and it just starts blowing people the fuck up like you're popping popcorn. So it's a good time. So the shards are Parkour Velocity, because he's slow as shit. To, uh, we got health, we got health, we have uh, effectiveness on energy orbs and uh, max energy when spawning. And honestly, that does kind of come into play for doing a few certain things. Um, Dysometric Guard for one, because you're just literally going to double cast that son of a bitch just to get it going. Um, and depending on the mission type that you're getting into, let's say you get into Exterminate and you just immediately need an armor strip people, you don't want to just run out of energy right off the get. You can see the uh, AX-52 is now the Kalashnikov Prime because it's an AK, let's be honest, okay? The weapons are kind of whatever, but personally, I actually have been running the Prisma Oma on a radiation build because any any enemy that dies on a radiation proc has the, has the opportunity of buffing Dysometric Guard, so it's it's a good time. Let's give old boy some, da uh, some buffs. Let's give some peoples. People will sleep on this motherfucker, but I'm telling you right now. Hey, girl. Get down back here. It's hard to argue with function. Okay? I mean, like, he's a health and armor tank, but goddamn. I mean, like, he, he is no punk. He's, he's fun. Is he like high tier? Absolutely not. But is he fucking fun? Yeah, he's pretty fun. So that ends up this video. So folks, I want to thank you very much for watching. As always, we'll catch you in the next one. All right.